Let's go. Let's got it. Hi, this is Scott with the 309 Punk Project, and I'm here with one of our good friends and board member, Grover Ballard. You all know Grover, but if you don't, Grover, introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. I'm Grover. I'm a 24-year-old male. Uh, I live here in Pensacola and have since I was uh, in the middle school era. Uh, I've been in a few bands in the scene. I was in Dicks for Mars. I was in Dead Bugs. I'm in Sour. Uh, and I'm in a few other projects that are still taken off the ground. Uh, and I've been booking shows here uh, for maybe seven, six years. And I've been part of 309 Punk Project for about a year and some change. All right, cool. Well, tell me how, first, tell me how you got involved in punk. Oh, gosh. Well, I think one of the reasons I like being on the 309 board uh, and, uh, and support 309 uh, is because I was really young whenever I got into the punk scene. I first met uh, some of the, the OG punks when I was only 15 years old or so. Uh, I started playing when I was 14 and started uh, playing shows when I was 15. And I remember our first show was at the Handlebar uh, and good family friend of, uh, of ours, uh, Jimmy Lamar, was there supporting mm -hmm. us. He was so excited. And in the middle of our set, he took two PBRs and rolled them on stage. And our moms <laughs> went, Jimmy, you can't feed them PBR. They're only 15. Uh, but since then, I... Uh, Jimmy helped uh, helped get me into it at a young age. Terry, of course, from Sluggos, and then uh, people like Eliza and Famous Gabe, uh, people I met when I was really young, just trying to play as many shows as I could. I was uh, in that band Dicks from Mars, and we would play maybe three shows a week during uh, a certain summer. Uh, so we were trying to get as many friends as possible, and it worked. Well, uh, tell me about, uh, I guess, your most recent bands. Uh, right now, uh, I, uh, before the plague, I was in a band called Dead Bugs, and we did some cool stuff. We went on tour maybe four or five times. And put um, out a really cool record, I should say. And put out a really cool record. I got it printed on cassette and vinyl. Uh, but now I'm in a, a, a film band called Sour, who's rooted here in Pensacola, but we all live in different places. Uh, they all live in the big cities while I'm here in the in the little capital of the world. But uh, besides that, I also just try to play with as many people as I can because it's a small community and the more people you can jam out with, bring their ideas to life, I think the better. All right. So what about 309? So when was the first time you went to 309? Well, I had a friend who lived at 309. Uh, his name was Spulker, Zach Spulker. Uh, and he lived there and he came to a few house shows that we had played and one night, uh, he was a little drunk and we were hanging out after the house show and he said, Grover, I love you, man. You got to come to 309 Punk House. And I said, what, what is a punk house? And he's like, it's a house where all people care about is punk. And I looked at my friend Drew, who's in Dicks from Mars with me back then, and I said, that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a house that's only punk. I said, this is a little too fantastical for me. Uh, but then a few, a little while later, uh, which I have the flyer somewhere back here on my wall, uh, we got invited to play a show at 309. It was one of the last shows uh, before uh, the 309 Punk Project kind of saved the building from uh, collapsing in on itself. Uh, it was a fundraiser show. It was Dicks from Mars, Little Wimp, uh, and Resolve, and maybe one other band as well. Uh, and it was really great. I think the other band was Crotch Rot with two Ts. I remember them. They were the stinkiest band in town, really smelly. <laughs> uh, so it's not just a name. Not just a name. <laughs> Which flyer is it? Can you point to it? Oh, God, I think it's uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out of frame. I think it's this flyer right here. Hey. And it says three dollars. Those were the days, right? A three dollar admission. I know. Now you got to pay five dollars. <laughs> now you got to do five, ten, you know, inflation. Yeah, I don't know. It's all. Uh, who do we blame for that one? So who do we blame? let's go on the list, right? All right. So uh, Grover, so tell me. Uh, why, uh, why is the 309 Punk Project important to you? Uh, I think the 309 Project's important to me, uh, first of all, because I'm into the uh, history of Pensacola Punk. Uh, so me, I love uh, learning about all the old bands and trying to take uh, inspiration. Of course, this bike is a pipe bomb is one of my all-time favorite bands. And there's a lot and if of- if you uh, get one of your, if, if you have your record, I know you don't probably have it handy, but if anyone- I might. Oh, let's see. Well, let's see. Give me one find that record. What you'll notice on the backside of it are all of these, this bike is a pipe bomb references, backside, front side, and even the record itself uh, is not only listed in Pensacola, but in Punxsicola instead. Can you hold up the Punxsicola a little part? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's down here, Punxsicola. Punxsicola, Florida. That's uh, the best, see, right? I know that was the first time where that name really stuck on anything in an official capacity. And what we're hoping to do now is change the name to Punxsicola for the entire city. Yeah. 
that'll take a big referendum. So uh, we're putting you in charge of that effort. We're going to have to bully the mayor, the <laughs> older Grover versus the younger Grover. Uh, <laughs> the clash of the Grovers. We'll see how, see who wins in the end. <laughs> right, but, uh, so but besides, so I cut uh, you off now. <laughs> no, you're fine. Besides the historical aspect of 309, I also like uh, that there's an effort to bring in young people. Uh, I think that a lot of people start uh, uh, booking shows or doing stuff just assuming that young people will come or that they'll trickle in or uh, things like that, but that's not always the case. You know, Sometimes you have to actually have uh, an initiative to try to get people to say, hey, this isn't a fantastical land we're living in the way I thought it was. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it is a real thing and there's uh, structures and frameworks for you to come in and express yourself and do mm -hmm. the things that you want to do that uh, you might not know you could have done here in this school. Yeah, and it's kind of cool, too, because one of the things with 309 in particular, uh, probably like a lot of other punk houses, but definitely 309, is that it's pretty much always been multi-generational, you know, just people from different age groups and all that stuff there, because, you know, uh, let's face it, I mean, there's only so much punks, uh, so many punks here in Pensacola, so you, you find your people and you gotta, you gotta stick together as much as you can. Absolutely. All right, so what are your goals with the 309 Punk Project? Uh, with the 309... Yeah, what do you hope for us to do? Uh, I think uh, my idea with the 309 Punk Project, and it's kind of part of our mission statement, is to kind of uh, inculcate a, a new era of punk that is radically diverse and radically accepted. Uh, mm -hmm. accepting. Uh, when I was young, of course, the scene was a little different. Uh, and even before that, uh, you know, uh, the old days of Black Flag or the Descendants, it wasn't the most accepting scene. But luckily, whenever I came into it, I realized I had a bunch of people saying, uh, it's more radical to be uh, overly accepting, you know, uh, than it is to be uh, kind of shutting others out. And we have a, a sign in our house that says uh, radical friendship is the only way we'll make it out, you know. Um, and so I kind of think it's the same with 309. If we can set up uh, the ability to kind of radically accept people into the punk scene, uh, it'll grow. Uh, people will understand that punk isn't just looking a certain way, but uh, feeling or acting a certain way. You know, um, and that most people in Pensacola are punk just because we live here in the South and we have to make do. All right, cool. Well, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, I would What's say a question that, uh, that nobody's ever asked you, but you wish they were. Oh, gosh, nobody's ever asked me. Uh, Don't I even guess have to be about punk. I would say uh, people would say, uh, ask me, why did you start? Uh, why did you want to create the bug house, which is a punk house I live in? Uh, and I would say that it's because of 309. Uh, I remember I reached out to, uh, my, to yours truly and said, how did, how did you do that? How did you get a really crappy house and make it nice and cheap for a bunch of people to live in? Uh, and then you gave me the, the keys to success, right? And then as a little kid, <laughs> as just a 20 year old before the housing market went crazy, I was able to buy a big old punk house. And uh, at one point we were doing two shows a month here and it was really nice, but then the plague hits, of course, mm -hmm. so you can't. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that if it weren't for 309, I would, probably would have never uh, fallen in love with this collective living situation, mm -hmm. especially I don't, I've never lived in not a punk house. So when I mm -hmm. moved out at 17, I was in a Dix Ramar's house, a Romana Street house, this house, that house, and now here I am. It's funny too, because a lot of times people will think about the punk house and think, not just ours and yours, but just punk house in general, and think I couldn't live with that many people. But uh, but it's like, at its best, is having an ideal family. Uh, these people that you've chosen, of our chosen family. And just like any other family, you know, some days are better than others, and sometimes it works better than other days. But, you know, still it's, beautiful uh, in all of its in all of its different ways and the way the communal living and also communal situations and our bigger communal histories uh, can be. Yeah, absolutely. I'm blessed to have 309, the bug house and all the uh, coal punk scene uh, on my side are all, all working together to make things work even better, which is what we have to do in this small little city. Yeah, most def. So, well, I really appreciate your time and thank you so much uh, for all that you do for the community, uh, all that you do for the punk scene, and all that you do everywhere uh, where you're present. Uh, we are so fortunate to have you on. So thank you, Grover. Thank you, Scotty. I appreciate it. All right. Where's my stop button? Pause. <laughs>